I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, the Business Leaders Breakfast. Um, we're really lucky today to have Vicky Seacombe, uh, who is the Regional Manager for Western New South Wales Business New, New South Wales. So welcome. <laughs> thanks, Elaine. Thanks for having me. So we've got a few questions. Uh, learning a little bit about you and your journey. So um, you're currently Regional Manager for Business New South Wales, but you started um, your career in Sydney in events. Tell us a little bit about your career journey and yeah. how you got from there <laughs> to here. I know. So actually, interestingly, I grew up in Moray. So I grew up in Sydney, so yeah. right northwestern New South Wales, and I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. So my mum, very young, wisely suggested I should do a secretarial college because this is the late 80s. Yeah. Um, which, funnily enough, that has actually been something that's been because I can touch type. So from oh. now, it's the most amazing talent that I have. I wish I could do that. <laughs> I could do just- yeah, exactly. So I headed to Sydney um, and sort of did secretary work for a sort of couple of couple of years, but I actually felt that I can lead a little bit more, that a bit more of an education. Um, and actually I moved to Orange sort of the early 90s and um, did uh, rural business administration. I think it was a degree, it was an associate diploma. Um, and then after that started working for the Royal Easter Show. So Spent sort of three, no, 13 years there and just started off um, working in the events part, sort of on the horse um, area. I sort of progressed my way up there, sort of, sort of running all the agricultural competition with the Royal Easter Show. So absolutely love that. Um, you get taught so much in events, like you really get taught that resilience and doing things and getting things yeah. done on time. So, um, and I think it fitted, you know, all my... All my jobs have been really in not for profit organisations. So yeah. I've had a real, you know, I loved ag, that's what I grew up in. So promoting that to the wider audience was fantastic. But I knew I had to move on. So um, there I moved on to the Financial Planning Association. Yeah. So we had, again, another not for profit organisation really trying to. Um, promote financial planners and financial planning. So and that, what I was doing there was looking after the membership, running their events, um, and I was there for five years, So, which is really great. And then uh, during that time I actually moved to Orange and then sort of had a few little sort of small little other roles, but then yeah. basically moved into this role with Business New South Wales as the regional manager. Yeah. So doing lots of similar things but yeah. slightly different increasing my knowledge each time. Yeah, and, and that's great. I really love the journey where you keep changing and reinventing yourself yeah. in a lot of ways and you use the skills from the past. So uh, tell us a little bit about Business New South Wales. Yeah. Um, what do you do and <laughs> how do you support know, the region? Yeah, yeah. So, the, so Business New South Wales, which we were formerly the New South Wales Business Chamber. Okay. Yeah, so we had a name change about two and a half years ago just before COVID. Okay. Perfectly timed, <laughs> um, but uh, we've got a we're a not-for-profit organisation. So our main role is to provide a voice for business yeah. um, in New South Wales. But for me, it's more about Western New South Wales. Um, so that's sort of the the core main part of the role. But uh, the second part is to help businesses in industrial relations, wage rates, pays. You know, giving advice for business. So if they don't know what they're supposed to be doing with yeah. no advice on that. So um, our commercial arm, we have a law firm. Um, we've got a trade trade area, so if businesses are thinking about exporting, we're okay. taking their products overseas, we help them do that, get all the documentation in place, we do consulting. So actually the Chamber has a really big, you know, lots of things. So we often just say, give us a call, you know, yeah. Uh, we can try and if we can't help you, we can connect you somebody in the region that can help you. Yeah. So we're the connector and helper and um, we try to be, be all for everyone, but we can't be. <laughs> Love it. So how big is your region? It's actually 50% of the state. So it was just, oh, just a small bit. Yeah. A small bit. So, um, so let's go out to Broken Hill. So yeah. that's primarily, and I thought do go up to Lightning Ridge, but yeah. it's pro- predominantly the Central West, um, Arana and Far West okay. um, part of the region. So it's an amazing part of the state. I mean, you know, because yeah. we're both here, but just, you know, I moved here sort of 
13, 14 years ago, and I've gradually got to know a lot of the, well, not a lot of the business and the people, but there's the most amazing people doing the most amazing things in this reach, and, and I'm consistently excited, you know, by that. So that's really exciting. Yeah, and, and, and that's one sort of thing um, I really love is yeah. all these great little businesses you've never heard of and then suddenly you find out about them and it's going, it's amazing. Yeah. And um, you go, why couldn't I think of a concept <laughs> like that? <laughs> that, that it consistently inspire you. Like people yeah. just, you know, it might be just one person, you know, that's doing something or somebody's created a business and growing it now to a staff of 200 yeah. people, you know. But, you know, people found that ingenuity of, you know, something that they love to do or a great idea and just taking it further. Yeah, and that's great for um, the Centre West to run and Far West. Absolutely. So so basically what are some of the best programs Mm -hmm. which have come out of uh, Business New South Wales in recent times? What have you done? The um, it's probably not the most recent time, but it's the the there's two things that are really it's our local chamber alliance program, um, which has been in place for about eight or nine years. But yeah. every chamber in, in Australia is actually an individual, you know, organisation, yeah. which has its pluses and minuses. It means you know each cha- you know each organisation can really tailor what they do for their business community. But where the power is in all those groups is bringing them together. Yeah. You know sort of one business doing it alone, you've got a group of businesses. So what we do differently in New South Wales is we've created an alliance partnership with all the local chambers. Um, so it's 200 across, or 220 across New South Wales. So we've actually bringing one voice together. So um, it's our relationship with the sort of the Western New South Wales. We work closely together. You know, we do individual things. But when things go wrong, we can really come together to support the business community. Yeah. So, I, you know, that's something that we're doing that's not happening anywhere else in Australia. Um, the other thing is the Business Awards Program. Yeah. I love, hate the Business Awards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love, you know, it's a lot of work. And, you know, when I first came, I sort of couldn't quite understand why we did it. But ever since we did the first year, I realised, and it goes back to you find people doing the most amazing things. And it's that ability to be able to acknowledge and celebrate and showcase to the rest of the, you know, New South Wales or Australia what our business community is doing. So they're the two really key ones that I absolutely yeah. love. Yeah, I absolutely love the business awards because you see the, the very businesses, but also it's that chance for uh, a lot of the business to take their staff out and it's a yeah. great, great celebration. Yeah, it is. It's a really great. We just had our recent one and, you know, I even though they weren't all Central West winners, but, you know, it still highlights the strength of the, you know, yeah. a business community. Yeah. No, that's great. So um, really we've, we've had some interesting times. What's been your biggest challenge for being a regional manager? Yeah. <laughs> Such an interesting <laughs> question, isn't it? Like, but that's no, a good question. I, when I thought about this question, I was, you know, it's probably the hardest time when the business community is going through their hardest times. Um and being able to do something for them. You know, I think I think back, I mean, COVID will come to play later, but, you know, drought, you know, um, there was such a long time that we're going through that, and particularly the business community within towns. The support wasn't there. It was really hard. Um, and there's only so much you can do. You know, there's only so much advocacy. And when things aren't, you know, not willing to change, you've just got to find other avenues to try and help. So, you know, any time that a business is going through a tough time, that's kind of probably my hardest time. Yeah. So, you know, COVID, well, COVID was such yeah. interesting. That was a hard time. Yeah, yeah sure. especially when a lot of businesses got the shutdown orders. Yeah. Yeah, and the next day they suddenly didn't have a, a, a business. Yeah. And, yeah, a lot of people, and it was probably a little bit of support then ringing up, go, well, what can I do, what can I do? The COVID time, and that, um, I look at, back at that as probably, I knew that I wasn't doing the hardest, that, you know, every yeah. business was doing it. We were, yeah. you know, I was fine. My job, in, you know, yeah. is there to really, this is where the chamber actually came to the fore, I thought. Um, we started, so I've got a regional counterpart in every, yeah. you know, region. We would come together twice a week. We're talking about all the issues that each of our businesses were experiencing. So it, Every week, you know, twice a week. So we're yeah. feeding all that up to the government. So, 
And then as, you know, relief, you know, in the grants or public health orders came out, if something wasn't quite right or it wasn't working, we talk in business and feeding back up. Some changes we could get to make, some we couldn't. So, but I look back at that as not probably, it was a hard time, but I also, it was the most rewarding time. I think yeah. we really came to thought why we were here. Um, because often advocacy, you don't see results instantaneously. You don't often get yeah. quick wins. It's like pulling lots of different levers and, you know, working with organisations. You know, we've talked to a lot of the collaboration with RDA or the Central News HQ or Central New South Wales JO and JET, you know, it's yeah. working together and pulling different levers. But it often, you don't see that, you know, the fireworks yeah. go off yeah. <laughs> and have a big yeah. win, um, but it's often just, you know, consistently. So yeah. it's just getting at it. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of businesses um, probably survive from a, a couple of the uh, levers that you managed to pull with government. So yeah, so a which is, result, yeah. you know, a lot of businesses made it through, which yeah. is the... Which is the good thing, yeah. Um, okay. So mentoring can play a really important role uh, in someone's personal and professional journey. Um, who is your mentor? Yeah. Who do you look up to and who do you get advice from that you get inspired from? Yeah, the... Um... I went when I was thinking about this, I was like, it was going back, and I really remember my first mentor really, really clearly. And it was a guy called Hamish Turner, so at the Royal Easter Show. And Hamish, um, Hamish went on to run R. Williams and a whole like, he's phenomenal. But there were two things he did that really made a difference in my career. And the first was he believed in me, so then I started to believe in myself. Um, and, you know, it's amazing what just a belief in somebody that you can do. Um, and he taught me the importance of making decisions. Yeah. I was sitting there going, well, what if it's the wrong decision? <laughs> you know, he's going, it doesn't matter whether it's the wrong or the or right. I right. just made the decision. Yeah. And that was really, you know, I often go back to that because it's like, you know, if it's the wrong decision, it's the wrong decision. And, you, yeah. you know, you'll make another decision or fix that. But... You know, the people around you need you to make a decision. Um, they can't do anything with inaction. So uh, because with the role is to show, you know, it was time sensitive. Um, there's often a lot of people involved. Um, and it was an event, and that event went on no matter whether you were ready or not. So you had to make a decision. Um, and, you know, we moved from the old showground of Sydney to the new showground. There were lots of different decisions to be made, lots of people not knowing what to do so consistently. So it was really good advice just to continue to make the decision and move on. Yeah. So he, you know, I probably don't haven't kept in contact with him, but he's a really strong, um, you know, force when I think back. Yeah. He helped me. Sort of take that step from just doing what I was told to do to actually taking responsibility. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and and that's probably a big thing. Uh, I've seen a lot of businesses uh, get paralysed mm. by not making Absolutely. a decision, or they don't enable their employees to make decisions. Yeah. Everything has to go through the boss there, and nothing happens. Nothing happens. No, that's exactly right. So. It's such a critical part, particularly not just yeah. for a person in their career, but you know, for a business owner. You're dead right. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> so um, basically, uh, of all the businesses and entrepreneurs that you've encountered in your role in almost a decade, yeah. what are some of the attributes that you feel make certain business people more successful than others, yeah. apart from make a decision? <laughs> um, I'll take that one away. I'll take that one away. The, you know, there's a couple of things, you know, you see that, you know, there's a whole different range of business too. There are people yeah. just doing what they, people don't go into business, you know, because they want to go into business. They've generally got a great idea or they're good at something. But I always say the ability to hustle and not just, you know, that real entrepreneurial hustle, but the ability to go out and make sale and 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 actually to get things done. You know, that that's that combination. Uh, they tend to be a risk taker. Um, of some sort. Yeah. The really successful ones I've seen employ people as they move to that stage, yeah. the things that they can't do going back to. They can't be everything. You know, yeah. you've seen that in your life, you know, the business owners, um, 
they can't be everything, you yeah. know, but they've got to realise what they're good at and follow those people around them. And I think what I've seen a lot of is business of collaborating with each other. And I think that that strength to re- understand that not everyone's a competitor. Yeah. You know, if you could collaborate with sort of other businesses within your region or similar industries, that strength really comes from there. Um, what we've seen recently, resilience, yeah. you know, um, and because I think people can look at a business and not think of a business as a person because generally the person who started it is a person, you know, they, they've got lives, you know, they've taken a massive risk to set up their business um, and there's been a lot of peaks in the last couple of years and you sort of think, you know, there's a real resilience to uh, and actually at the award, somebody said, made a, made a comment, everyone was winners because they were all still there. Yeah. And I just went, oh, my God, that is so true. true. So, you know, so really it's that, you know, that sort of thing, resilience, you know, collaboration, um, that has been a hustler. <laughs> Getting up each morning and going, yeah, I had a bad day yesterday and um, gonna, today's going to be a better day. There's a huge amount of stress on a business owner um, and... They often feel when, you know, they've got a ticket through COVID and I've talked to a lot of business owners and they were so worried for their own staff and how they would keep them so they could, you know, pay their bills and do things. So they sort of, I think people like to think that it's just a, a business sort of person that they are there. You know, they really care. Um, so, you know, I've just got a lot of respect for business owners. Yeah. Yeah, no, the hours they do, it's like, oh. like there's there's nothing but respect. So um while you sort of manage such a really big region, mm-hmm. um, how do you manage work life balance? Please? <laughs> <laughs> is there such thing as work life balance? You know, this is another thing that I got taught for yeah. You're the one that's gonna set the boundaries. Yeah. You know, you, and you know, we're not always good at it, like between that work life balance. And I think it can become a bit of a cliche, like, yeah. you know, sort of, you know, be doing good work-life balance. But I think a lot of the newer generation coming through are really, yeah. you know, really uh, embracing that. And I suppose my generation, I hate feeling like at the end of the time. I know. <laughs> we, but, we might talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've got to set those boundaries. And um, I've actually done a bit of resetting this year too because I think before COVID, you know, I would, I would drive three hours to a meeting and I just don't think that, you know, whilst it's important to do that face-to-face, I think it's finding that balance of, yeah, I might do it this time and we'll get a really good day out of it and then come back as opposed to it's half an hour meeting. Let's, let's, can we do so? Yeah. And, um, you know, that way I can actually be helpful to more people, yeah. you know. Um, so, yes, it's putting in, going back, to, I've actually done a bit of a change in for this year. My husband and I made a decision, you know, to do one thing once a month yeah. and, you know, and, but, you know, that's just, it's up to me to make that decision yeah. where that is, you know. I love being able to, I love being there to help people and do what we, whatever we can at the end of the phone. And I think you've just got to make a decision or something, you know, do yeah. that where it starts and finishes. Yeah. <laughs> and especially how far that you have to travel to service your clients there. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, Zoom and the technology, COVID's probably the one positive out of COVID is basically it made us embrace technology. Yeah, totally. And I think we, there was a real, um, I don't know whether, we, you know, particularly in, just West New South Wales, you wanted to be there. People wanted you to be there. Yeah. And I think we still want that, but at the same time, we just need to find a nice medium between it all. Yeah. And that's going to be actually helpful for all of us. Yeah. And a lot of people used to, in the past, have the badge on. Yeah, I work um, yeah, 60 hours yes. a week there, and now it's going, well, actually, my family's not seeing me. Uh, yeah, not seeing my husband, my wife, mm. and all of those sort of things. And it's like going, do we really want to live like this? So mm-hmm. I think COVID caused a little bit of a, a reset. Yeah, now, absolutely, it? didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> How, however, um, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm more than happy to work in an office because, yeah, I was in our um, study there and uh, I did a couple of interviews and there was a Harry Potter castle behind me. <laughs> um, and, yeah, there was painting and it was death. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually quite happy to be out, out in the office. Or the yeah, office it's that little bit of that distance between home and work. So Absolutely. It's a little bit of that. 
Yeah. So um, with all your sort of seeing what's happening in the Central West, um, what do you do? You have any predictions what's going to happen over the coming years? We, I think the Central West is so well placed. Do you know what I mean? We're kind of, you know, we've all known how great it is and we've had some great, you know, particularly until through COVID, the regional tourism, you know, that changed the regional. So that's generally across the board. But, you know, if you look at um, the improvements they're going to make to the Great Western Highway, so we get that, we've got the Western Sydney Airport. So if you think about all our food and produce going that way, um, Plus, you know, just general visitation, tourism. But you look to the west, you know, the parks, forbs, you know, yeah, inland rail, rail yeah. logistics hub, um, sort of mining the rare. There's just a lot going on, renewables. There's yeah. a huge amount going on in this region. I actually think we're poised to take that next big, big step. Yeah. Um, and our proximity to Sydney is really, you know, we're in such a good position and there's so, I just think there's, this is, the region's going to continue to grow. Yeah. Um, we've just got to make sure that we're ready for it to grow. Yeah. That's the making sure, you know, the telecommunications in place, you know, we've got water security, all these bits and pieces. Um, and I'm actually now starting to look towards drought again. I think that, yeah. you know, I, I know that we don't want to end up where we were at the last time. Yeah. I think we need to start talking about those things. So we it's only gonna go up. We've just yeah. gotta, you know, yeah. get prepared. And I think too with increasing populations and all that. I know it rained today, um, but yeah, we need to look at that because yeah, if we don't, um, yeah, we're going to be in the same situation we were yeah, yeah. four or five years ago. That's exactly and none, none of us want to go back. Because none of that drought can't you know, and it will come back. Like yeah. that's not and um we you know, that's what we do. Skills. Do you remember we're working yeah. hard to bring all these senior labour and skills into the region? Um, so we want to be able to hold on to those okay. in those people. Yeah. So really yeah. important. So um, we've got a bit of a hashtag which we use quite regularly. Central West is best. Um, tell me why Orange uh, for yourself is such a great place to live in, and what do you want uh, the world to know about life in Orange? But be careful, we don't want everyone coming here. I was going to say, actually, <laughs> we have to tell everyone. Like, yeah. You know, best, the good thing. Best secret. <laughs> well, the good thing about, you know, when you look at the Central West, you know, there's so many little pockets of good things. Yeah. So, but, you know, the one thing um, I, you know, people talk about, you know, food and wine, all that sort of stuff, which yeah. is great. But I found the community really um, supportive um, yeah. for newcomers. So... My husband, I met my husband here, so, yeah. and we talk about this often, like he joined a sporting group, you know, and was able to meet lots of people. So, you know, you can join lots of different groups, there's lots of communities, and people do welcome you and do, um, so I was, I think the community at the core is really, yeah. um, and they're all different, you know, yeah. Oberon's a different community as opposed to Bathurst, or, you know, they're yeah. all different, but they all bring something slightly different and generally all really welcoming. Yeah. You know, we do have four seasons. Yeah. Mostly through. So that's <laughs> a, I'm not sure about every season. Yeah. But that's what keeps people away too. <laughs> so yeah, no, I just I actually think it's the people really in so many respects. Yeah. That's the I think the people make the place there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So um have, um we we have a, a little bit um what we call the fast five there. So okay. we, we throw a couple of questions at you and um, see how you go. So um, three dream dinner guests that you have. It's probably the food. I like a little bit. I, probably somebody has some really, you know, yeah. now that question has the Barack Obama's yeah. and those things. And I'm a bit of a foodie, so Rick Stein. Yeah. So Dan Hong from Mr Wong's. And yeah. the other person um, I always say is Sam Kerr. Uh, from Matilda's, okay. like um, I think what she's been doing for females in sport in general about yeah. equity and just getting and she's such a hero to so many young girls. Like and such a great soccer player. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I know that combination is a bit weird, and I'd probably get Rick Stein or yeah. Dan Hong, but you know I think all of those, those two built their you know true yeah. So so what would you be? Well, I'd get Rick Stein. <laughs> 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 Sorry, 
So a nice fish man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Fish man, yeah, you're the, you know, yeah. that's why you bring chefs to you. I know. It's like, uh, and I, I couldn't see him just sitting down, just going, oh, no, we'll let you cook that. I think too many of all those people, and probably what I see, you know, on social yeah. they sort of really interactive and they're chatty and I kind yeah. of um, um, really like that. I think that sort of casual, you know, yeah. um, you know, and uh, you know what, they absolutely love what they do. That's yeah, the, it's bringing that yeah. personality to the food. Yeah. yeah. So um, the best cafe or restaurant in the region. Oh. I know, I you, know you've got a, a number of members there. So I know. But it's a very loaded question. Let me, here's my thing. It's good, Eddie. So yeah. it's my daily coffee. Yeah. So um, honestly, they are the most amazing people and team there. And they, but every time we, they're on the coffee, they know who you are, we talk about. So me, those guys are just amazing. And they're, um, when they're shut yeah, very distressed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I think uh, any hidden gems in the Central West person place been here or This is going to be a bit of a plug, yeah. and, so, and I have to. It's actually my cousin, so I'm going yeah. to put it out there. So before I say, yeah. but um, my cousin Maddie and her husband Tom run uh, a business called Thomas Keith, which is tables made out of reclaimed um, uh, timber, yeah. and they're just here in Orange and they're very unassuming, but they're just literally getting the most amazing timber from all these places and just making tables. And I think they probably exemplify they only moved, you know, the region a couple of years ago and again sort of got braced. But if you're after a table like they're just uh, I'm amazed at what they've been doing because they're just getting yeah. in and doing great stuff. It's just Earlier, we we're talking about those little niche areas yeah. for businesses, and, and and that's amazing because it's they can't make the same table twice. No, they so can't. Everything's going to be different and, in a while. Absolutely, and there's a story behind there. Yeah. You know, and it's not just them, but you know, you often find with a lot of business, there's a story behind. So yeah. it's just asking, you know. So they're my little hidden gem. Okay, no, that's great. So, uh, favorite holiday destination in the world, or or in uh, New South Wales, uh, and one which is on your bucket list. Yeah. Um, so my fight, <laughs> this is, yeah. I've been raving about this, and it's locally New South Wales one, yeah. um, is Griffith, New yeah. South Wales. And it's, I feel like it's a hidden gem. Yeah. The, um, we went there for a long week, course, for three days at yeah. the end of the year, and there's so much going on there. Like there's lots of food, there's great Italian restaurants, yeah. um, we looked at the ad, like it's really, we just had the most, I've actually told everyone about it, I yeah. mean, we've just had the most fabulous time, but internationally it's probably South America, so okay. I've absolutely been there twice, yeah. absolutely. This time I haven't said all of it, by the way, so I want to go back um, and see some more countries, but yeah. that's a really interesting country as well, all continent. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> Okay. Um, so, in your career, what's been the best day at Business New South Wales over the past 10 years? Um, maybe, probably, I think, you know what, it's probably the Business Awards every year, you know, the, um, and we have missed uh, one year uh, yeah. due to COVID, but when it, every time I get to the business awards, and even though I know it's a lot of work, um, seeing those businesses win those awards and all those those businesses then go on to compete at the state awards. We've yeah. had a few winners at the state awards, actually silos, transforce, like there's yeah. been, and that's competing against you know, most businesses that run across New South Wales. So yeah. to be able to see our region, you know, particularly as a spotlight yeah. um, and to really know that they've come from here and they've created this amazing business. That's been, yeah. that has to be a highlight, really, anything to do with that. No, no that's amazing. So um, how can sort of viewers and listeners uh, for this conversation that we've had learn more or, or engage with business New South Wales? Well, probably the easiest to so say go to the website, but we might have just put my details at the, the bottom. Just yeah. give me a call. I think yeah. that's the, the one thing, um, the... Because what people don't know is that, you know, often we're just here to connect people, yeah. you know, and we do this a lot. Do you know what I mean? So 
if somebody gets in contact with me or gets in contact with you, we kind of know who the, that business needs to speak to. Yeah. So you just need to chat to one of us and yeah. then we can sort of connect you with somebody in the region or yeah. if it's a grant or, you know, even the one-on-one advice from, like, business, business HQ. You know, yeah. we know where to connect you with to get you that help. So yeah. it doesn't cost anything. anything. So yeah. just, you know, it's like just give, you know, we'll give people my detail, but, just, yeah. you know. Is a call, and that's often it's just part of my job is just connect to business that's what they need. Yeah, it, you know, whether it's me or somebody else, you know, yeah. there's somebody there is support for businesses, so we just yeah. want to connect people up with the right, yeah, right support. So, um, you also put me in touch with the local business chambers, yep, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that, first tick, yeah. so, that is the first tick, so right. you did right. So the thing with the like business chain, particularly for a new business moving to the region, and we've yeah. seen a lot of particularly one man, you know, sole traders, consultants, yeah. um, is you want to build that network around you. And yeah. particularly after COVID, we've really I think there's that need for people to, you know, communicate, yeah. connect face to face. And that's what, you know, a local chamber really does is Helps you connect, you know, meet people, get an understanding of what's going in your town. Um, but just a, and there is a great support network, you know, because they're doing, they're going through everything you're going through. So, yeah. and I think that's a good thermometer, really, because you go, oh, I'm doing it hard, and you go and talk to someone else. Go, oh, yeah, we've got the same issue. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of the times, yeah, um, sometimes too. You, you meet people which uh, can actually enhance your business. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's a really important thing. Yeah, that's the – I think sometimes just talking to people, you yeah. know, a similar situation feels like you're not going crazy. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do it by yourself. Yeah, you, you don't. You've got that sort of group there. And people just want to help. Yeah. So thank you for your time, Vicky. So um, – and hopefully we'll get you back in the future to sort of uh, – see more exciting things which is happening with Business New South Wales. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Harry. It's been really, um, it's just nice to, you know, talk about what we do and where we've been and where we're going. So Yeah. And I think part of that is that inspiration for other people go, there are career paths that you can sort of do. There's options and there's people to talk to. There's never, this is the thing with career paths, you know, I think there's some people who know exactly where they're going to go. I was not one of those people. So, you know, I had to evolve and learn new things and eventually found, you know, where I wanted to be. Yeah. And my reason for doing has always been in that not-for-profit sector, there's yeah. a why. Yeah. I like the why. Yeah. And, you know, that's probably guided me through. I hadn't realised it's guided me you know, right through. Well, once again, thank you for your time and um, hopefully stay warm, you know. <laughs> thank you.